Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Engineering Circuit Analysis Tutor. We're going to solve this mesh current problem, which we have as our final problem. And so what we have is voltage source here, voltage source here, they're inverted in, in terms of their polarity, and we're given the voltage sources, not as phasers, we're giving them, we're given them in the time domain. So here we have magnitude, frequency, zero degree phase, magnitude, frequency, zero degree phase. And so we're, again, given the uh, 50 microhenry inductance and the two microfarad capacitance. Again, we're not giving them giving them as phasers. We're giving them uh, as as if they you pull them off the shelf. And then we have our resistances here. What we want to do is find I A, I B, and I C these currents um, in their directions as they're drawn on the board. So we're assuming that those are the correct directions. We want to find those currents as if they are drawn correctly on the board, and we want them in the time domain. So you have parentheses T here. So the bottom line is we want to convert all of this stuff to phasor notation. We want to find the impedances of everything that we need to find. So we have the circuit in terms of phasors and impedances. And then we want to write the three mesh equations because we have three meshes here. We want to solve for those mesh currents. And then once we get the mesh currents, we'll relate them to IA, IB, and IC, and then finally convert back to the time domain. So you're putting everything together in terms of your mesh current skills. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. The first thing we need to do is realize that VA and VB are not phasers. They are given to us in terms of uh, functions of time. So we need to convert them to phasers. Now VB is the simplest thing. Remember here, you can read the uh, angular frequency omega right off uh, of, of the either one of these guys. It's 10 to the five radians per second. All right, that's what omega is. It's the same frequency because we're driving linear circuits. We're gonna have the same frequency everywhere. Now for VB, it's very, very simple because VB, I'll call it capital VB, since it's already a cosine, it's just a magnitude that's sitting out in here, and then a phase angle, which is zero because this is the frequency time plus zero, so it's gonna be zero degrees, and that's volts. So that's really simple to write down. But this guy, VA, is not given to us in terms of a cosine, so you have to be really careful. It would be very easy for you to say, this is 240 at an angle of zero, and that would be your phasor. That would be wrong, because this is not a cosine function, this is a sine function. Remember, when you're writing phasors, your uh, time domain functions need to be cosines. All right, or you can't write the phasor, or at least you're not gonna be consistent with the way we've been doing it in all of the other problems. So what we need to do is convert this sine into a cosine. Now, the way to kind of do that, I'll just write it for you, and then we'll explain why uh, here. You know, sines and cosines have the same shape, so really this, is, this can be written equivalently as 240 times the cosine of 10 to the 5t. This is just the angular frequency times time. Then you always have to subtract 90 degrees phase angle. So VA here in either representation is exactly the same thing. If you write it as 240 times the sine of this guy, it's exactly the same thing as 240 times the cosine of this guy minus 90 degrees. And that comes about because sines and cosines are exactly the same shape. It's just that the cosine is shifted 90 degrees or pi over two radians compared to a sine. Right? If you grab it and you shift it over by that phase angle, it's gonna line up exactly. Now the question is, how do you remember there's a minus sign here? Well, you can just memorize it. If you're going to take sines and convert them to cosines, just remember to subtract 90 degrees off. What you can do to convince yourself of that is just draw a little sketch. What we're basically claiming is that if you take a cosine function and shift it by negative 90 degrees, you arrive at the sine function. You can memorize that, but you can also draw a picture. So let's start with the cosine function. Cosine functions start up at positive one, they go down, they go up, and as you know, they go on and on and on forever. So I could keep drawing it, but basically it looks